Uh, their last medal hasn't been since 1984 when they won bronze. Obviously, they competed in 96 when they hosted. Um, but it was really cool to watch the United States women, first off, defeat like really big countries. I mean, India is a field hockey powerhouse in both men's and women's, and they were able to beat India um, in India during this qualifying tournament. Uh, they went through the group stage pretty well. India, Italy, New Zealand, they beat Japan in the semifinals to make the Olympic tournament. And when you think field hockey, you got to think Pennsylvania because it's uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, is such a big hotbed for field hockey. But uh, yeah, what do you think about the United States being back here? It's cool. It's it's awesome to see U.S. field hockey come into the fray again. Uh, I'd say from an NCAA standpoint, you kind of see field hockey as being a sport that's very much you see the domination on the East Coast. You see even, you know, there's plenty of Big Ten teams that are very good at field hockey. But at the same time, I would say this is not a, a sport where I think the United States is favored to get on the podium. I think for the U.S., if they can get out of the group stage, that would be f a phenomenal result for them, especially considering they're in a group with the silver medalists from Tokyo, Argentina, mm -hmm. and Great Britain, who took bronze in Tokyo, and I believe won gold in Rio, and I think in London, too, if I'm not mistaken. But they definitely have been a field hockey powerhouse of yeah. late. But the team everyone's going to watch here is the Netherlands. They've mm -hmm. always come in. In, in women's field hockey every year being so good on the men's side too they're always very good they're probably the country to watch i think belgium is another team to keep an eye on as well but yeah i think for the united states get out of the group get into the quarterfinals i think that would be see what happens a right really fun showing and then see what happens yeah like build up some sort of momentum going into your home olympics in la uh the men's medalist from tokyo belgium won gold australia silver india uh won bronze and then the women's as you just mentioned the netherlands uh winning gold in argentina and great britain by the way when i covered field hockey at syracuse it was like a big deal when you got a oh, transfer yeah. out of the netherlands when you picked up a player <laughs> a dutch player like you knew that you were doing something good just the classic <laughs> orange for orange transfer right? it's just a natural <laughs> transition to go from uh, holland to syracuse yeah, exactly uh one of the fun sports that i love watching but i only watch during the olympics is handball um because it's one of those sports that you know we never see ever in uh the united states i think we did play it once in like elementary school um for like recess we did too yeah, and gym and recess <laughs> it's a nice safe play. sport to play yeah, in, yeah, uh, yeah, for in school sure. um france the defending champs in both men's and women's competitions that's huge going into a home olympics and um i believe for the you can correct me on this for the men they have to face denmark in group b mm -hmm. um which is a repeat of the tokyo final so just i mean overall your thoughts on on olympic handball always a lot of fun to watch obviously with Recent officiating decisions in some of these major soccer tournaments, uh, at least in handball, you know what a handball is. It's not like in soccer where there's been a, a little bit of a debate there. But <laughs> handballs are legal in, in it, the sport. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> the name of the sport. But yeah, no. So handball is always a lot of fun to watch. Of course, it's a sport where the United States rarely, if ever, qualifies. There's no U.S. team for these Olympic Games. It's dominated by the European countries for the most part. Uh, a lot of the Scandinavian mm -hmm. nations like Norway and Denmark and Sweden have performed very well in the sport. But just seeing the fast pace of it, I don't know. For The confidence for a handball goalie must be really hard. In soccer, when you get a clean sheet, or in hockey, when you get a shutout, it's like the biggest deal in the world. A handball shutout is like, oh, mm -hmm. I only gave up 25 goals today. So right. it's just it's such a fast-paced, fun sport. I love it. And it's a lot of fun to watch you know, throughout the group stages and just seeing the, the, the physicality and just the aggressiveness of it. But if you like goals and you like a lot of points and whatever, yeah. that's the sport to watch. But fast paced, super unique situation, though, with France defending mm -hmm. both the men's and the women's at home after winning in Tokyo. I mean, those create very high expectations for the host nation. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. I think as a fan that I'm definitely going to be watching because, you know, the U.S. has to field a team for the L.A. Olympics. So it's, it's kind of like, all right, like who can we find? And hopefully maybe these games can inspire some sort of uh, athlete who wants to play handball. So because we need get it. like Paul Skeens, yeah. just get like all your best <laughs> fastball pitchers in MLB. Tell them to play handball right? in L.A. in 20. Uh, 28 and you're good we, we need a team for la the other sport that again uh, slightly bigger than handball uh rugby it's rugby sevens officially um the united states isn't bad in rugby i mean when when they do the the, the global like the sevens tour around the world like they're always competing now they're not always like winning per se but like there was a stretch there where i thought the united states would really become a powerhouse in sevens they have a really good team the u.s is in both competitions both uh, the men's and the women's um or your thoughts on uh, olympic rugby this time around 
Well, the thing with rugby sevens that's always uh, fun to watch compared to regular rugby, which I think has 15 players per side, is you have seven players in a much more open space. The halves are very short, but still it produces a lot of a lot of points. You know, a try is essentially the equivalent of a touchdown, like in football, five points for a try in rugby, and then your extra point or your kick after the try is worth two points. So you still get to that seven. So as you're watching the rugby, the scoring pretty much holds unless you miss a kick and you only got five points. But that's kind of the sort of uh, the easy way to explain it. But for the men, the U.S. are in a group with the host France and with the defending gold medalist Fiji. Uruguay's in there too. They're always a very good rugby uh, nation. Whereas for the women, they're with France, who are silver medalists and obviously hosts now, and then Japan and Brazil. But with rugby, the story is always New Zealand. Mm-hmm. They were the o- uh, yep. them and Fiji were the only countries to medal in both the men's and women's tournaments uh, in Tokyo. So you always have to watch for New Zealand, Fiji, Australia. Of course. is very good. Argentina. But the thing with rugby that's so great is it's one of the sports that's kicking us off even before the opening ceremony. That's right. So you've got men's rugby matches on day minus two, which is Mm -hmm. July 24th, that goes alongside the men's soccer uh, group stage games. And you'll also see you'll see quarterfinals the day before the opening ceremony. So the rugby tournament, it flies by. There's a lot of games. I think for the United States, I think obviously get out of the group would be ideal, but I think for, I think for the men, it will be tougher than the women, I would say just based on the groups that they're in. Yeah. Um, one player you want to look out for the United States, just because he's one of the few I've heard of, uh, Perry Baker. He's, uh, his last shot for some sort of a medal. The United States has not medaled, um, in Olympic rugby. And, uh, by the way, also taking place at the Stade de France before the athletics competition, uh, goes in there. So really exciting stuff. I may have a ticket for that. Um, lucky you. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll send back some photos. All right. Now we're getting into the fun sports that, um, the United States does really well in. We'll start with volleyball, uh, indoor volleyball, particularly the United States women coming into this as the defending gold medalist. They beat Brazil in the final in Tokyo. Karsh Karai back at the helm. Um, this is a team that is expected to contend for the podium again, if not, you know, defend their gold medal, but a lot of competition for the women, Ori. Plenty, but I think the United States, they, they always come in as a, as a contender for a medal every Olympics and indoor volleyball, and it obviously stems from the NCAA and the competitiveness of it, but just looking at the last three years of what NCAA volleyball has turned into, you think of that Nebraska volleyball game inside of um, in Lincoln, where you had a huge amount of spectators that broke the women's sporting attending record at the time. I think there's over 90,000 people there. And then that stemmed into a professional league in the PVF with the Columbus Fury. Yep. And you have some of those players that have played against the Olympians. Some of the players in the PVF are our Olympians. So not just giving them a chance to win in Paris, but giving them a chance to win in LA and potentially start maybe a little bit of a dynasty here, similar to what we've seen from the American women's basketball team. So uh, they're with France, China, and Serbia Mm -hmm. in their group, which is a little bit of a difficult group, but the U S is expected to at least get to the semifinals. I would say at least medal for the women. Whereas for the men, is going to be a little bit of a tougher road. They've got Japan, bronze medalists from Tokyo, Argentina, and Germany. And this is another sport where France has a defending gold medalist, the men winning gold over a ROC, which was the Russian team back in Tokyo, but obviously no Russian team this time around. Right. So, But for the men, we'll have to see if they can get that big showing, similar to what they did in Beijing in 2008. Mm-hmm. But I think for the women, the expectation is – at least get to the semifinals, probably get to the final and win it all again. Yeah, a couple of my thoughts from that. I mean, everyone who I've talked to from the Columbus Fury, they know how pivotal this summer is to really build up momentum for this sport. So obviously the Olympics are a huge opportunity to really build up the audience that they want to carry over to the NCAAs and of course to the Pro Volleyball Federation. They want to fill up Nationwide Arena to watch the Columbus Fury and I think the Olympics has a big part of that. Uh, And as you mentioned, yeah, France Again, the defending champs in the men's competition. I mean, I, I expect France to, you know, be. We can talk medal count down the road once we get close to the opening ceremony and we're done proving all these sports. But man, the expectations for France and so many of these sports seems to be really high. Uh, China, by the way, in the women's competition. I mean, Rio 2016 won the gold medal in that. So China's always someone to watch out for. Um, beach volleyball. So I, you know, 
for me, like the glory days, and I think we still we're still in it. Maybe it's just different glory days, mm -hmm. but I just keep remembering, you know, like uh, Walsh Jennings and you know Misty May, and even though it's been a couple of Olympics removed since then, like the Tokyo was all about the A team. Um, that was fun to just follow at the same team, like year after year when they were winning Athens two thousand four, Beijing, um, and then London. So yeah, this time around, and obviously the United States expected to compete, but uh, it's it's a bit different, right? Very different, but obviously with Misty May Trainer and Kerry Walsh Jennings and that, you know, run that they went on in the mid 2000s and then of course winning, uh, being competitive again in London, it was amazing to, to help beach volleyball's popularity and it's a sport that obviously when you look at the NBC4 television schedules for prime time and daytime and what sports get on, beach volleyball is always one of those that's going to be on our station uh, throughout, but the things with beach volleyball that I find fascinating for the Americans, the pair to watch for the women, Sarah Hughes and Kelly Chang, very, very good. They're definitely going to be the top American contenders for a medal. Um, I would say it's the most picturesque and beautiful venue of the games being at the Eiffel Tower Stadium. You're literally playing beach volleyball at the foot of the Eiffel Tower, which is just insanely cool. I'd be distracted. <laughs> a little bit distracted, just, just ever so slightly. And that's something in general with these Olympics that I find so unique and and fun compared to others. It, London is the last one I can think of that's similar. You have iconic sporting venues yeah. outside of the Olympics and just iconic places in general that people all over the world know. Everyone knows the Eiffel Tower. People know Roland Garros for tennis and all these other different places. And then the fascinating thing for the men, if anyone out there remembers in the NBA, if anyone remembers Chase Budinger, NBA player, I believe he was in a dunk contest. He is playing in the Olympics in beach volleyball. He's tall. He's tall. That helps. Which really helps, but a former NBA uh, All-Star Weekend participant is now a beach volleyball Olympian. It, it doesn't get any better than that. So I definitely want to see how he does in this <laughs> in these Olympics. I'm looking forward to it because, as you said, uh, beach volleyball, since its uh, introduction into the Olympic program in, I believe, 96, um, Olympic organizers have been able to put it in some really great places. I mean, Sydney 2000 was right on Bondi Beach. You mentioned... Um, london that was on horse guards parade and of course rio i mean come on what better venue than copacabana beach yeah. right so mm -hmm. um some great locations that we've seen beach volleyball compete in and the eiffel tower will be one of them um last but not least water polo specifically women's water polo because the united states has just had such a dynasty in this sport and it's not only the fact that they've been winning it's the way they've been winning and how they've been able to really dominate in past olympic competitions maggie steffens is back again i mean like i feel like she's just going to be back every single Pretty olympics much, you know yeah. like you know it, it part of you is like she's still playing and if you you watch and then she's like yeah yeah she's she's definitely still playing uh ori the united states going for their fourth mm -hmm. straight olympic gold medal in this competition yeah and i think they definitely are right in the mix to get it i mean you think Handball has some physicality. You think hockey is physical? Watch water polo. You get an idea of just how tough and physical these athletes are. You literally are seeing people tackling others and like putting them underwater. And I tried water polo once, and the one rule that Tell is, me more. <laughs> yeah. The one rule that I learned when playing, and it's easy to look past, you're only allowed to use one hand the entire game. So keep that in mind. So if you're a lefty, you can't use your right hand to hold the ball or shoot the ball. You have to use your left hand. You can't switch between hands. So that is, whereas handball, you are allowed to do that. But well, your hands are full anyway, because the other hand is either, you know, trying to pat, you know, trying to stay above water and also exactly. like trying to like defend yourself against everyone who's like literally on you so literally it's on insane. you like trying to hold you underwater so it is one of the most physical sports physical demanding sports that i've ever watched definitely and it's another one that's very uh there's a lot of tension in there also because unlike handball less goals in water polo also goalkeepers play a huge role because the goal is not as big but yeah the u.s women should absolutely be in the mix to win it all again they are in a group with the team they beat in the final in the gold medal game in tokyo and spain Again, with the host France, the U.S. and France are going to be playing each other in like a million different sports. It's kind of nuts that they drew France in like almost everything. Greece, Italy also in the women's group. And then you look at the men likely don't have the same kind of chances as the women because with men's uh, water polo, it's always about Serbia and Hungary yep. and Montenegro. Yep. And the Greeks are always very good who were the silver medalists in Tokyo, Serbia winning it in Tokyo. So uh, the men's 
the U.S. will be just happy to maybe get a couple of wins under their belt. I don't expect them maybe to get out of the group, but for the women, got to win it all. And and similar to, again, like we mentioned with field hockey and volleyball and all these other sports, the NCAA pipeline helps. California being such a hotbed for water polo has helped that sport grow and become a world powerhouse in that. So that's, I mean, of all these sports we've talked about, the women's water polo team is probably the best USA yeah. team among all these sports that we've mentioned. I, I think so too. I mean, I think when you talk about the United States chances in the sports we just talked about, water polo is definitely up there. And then that's probably followed by indoor volleyball. I think they're close, but I think there's more competition for indoor volleyball um, than in water polo. Not that it won't be competitive, but I think the United States should be able to, to come away with at least a medal, if not gold in women's water polo. So yeah, should be exciting stuff. This it, is just a portion of the just uh, a portion, and yeah. just to keep in mind for LA twenty twenty eight, we're gonna add more to that team sports calendar. I know you cricket. Think, you ready? You think this is crazy? Four flag years, football, flag football, <laughs> cricket, baseball, <laughs> and softball. Yeah, all with all these sports and soccer and basketball. I don't know how they do it in seventeen days. I, I might petition to get another week out of it. I mean, it's, <laughs> I, we're we're getting close to there already. We're starting competition before the you know the flame even arrives and, yeah. and the cauldron's lit. So I don't, that's just me. Or we could talk for hours. I mean, we end up we will end up doing that uh, with all the previews. <laughs> yeah. But that is it for now. Ori Benatar, thanks for uh, joining me as we talk more Olympics and uh, much more Olympic previews to come. But for now, that's it.